Aleluya. Aleluya. Good evening, everybody. The Lord will surprise you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for this opportunity one last time. And um, I want to appreciate everybody who has been diligent all through this conference. Your time invested in God's presence will not be in vain. In the name of Jesus. Let's lift our hands to heaven and ask him to give us a very definite encounter tonight. Move upon my life, O oh God. Move upon my destiny. Speak to me. Lift me by your power, by your word. Is someone praying? Visit me, O oh God, and give me a mighty encounter. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, that you reveal yourself to us afresh. Let there be a reign of the supernatural in this place. Help us even by your spirit. In Jesus name amen and amen please be seated hallelujah be seated and I want you to be very very sensitive if you are yet to submit your prayer request you can always wave it um, there should be ushers around you especially for those who perhaps may just be coming outside do well the ushers are ready to receive your prayer request you just take your time to write and wave it to them and then they'll collate everything so that we present it before the God who answers prayers and you will surely testify in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah when um, the invite for this conference was extended to me um, for me it was it's always been a great honor and a privilege to serve Jesus I consider my service to Jesus as far as blessing his people an eternal privilege and I do not take it for granted this is why he's called us this is why he has helped us and so for me um, I really consider this aside from the fact that we have been called to be ministers by the grace of God um, ministering in this church especially because of the antecedents the history it was a very very emotional moment for me and um, so I came here for two reasons number one to honor the invite and be a blessing to God's people as far as the grace that he's given is concerned um, but the second reason is also to come and say a big thank you I know that this is many years but I, before I have my final session, I needed to take this time to say thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. Thank you, New Heritage Baptist Church. Hallelujah. You see, you can change the future, but you cannot change yesterday. Hallelujah. For believing in me, believing in us, and allowing your church to be a platform for God to do the things that he's done through our lives and we're not ashamed to say thank you thank you for your kindness hallelujah particularly to the angel over this house thank you so much sir 
it takes a lot of humility and flexibility i remember through the years when we'll be holding our conference he would just sneak in and i remember not once not twice he would just go to the back right there and just sit quietly and i'm like no this man should not do this this is the work that god has committed to him and your yieldedness has helped us has become a ladder for many of us to serve his purposes in a greater way we are deeply grateful sir deeply grateful hallelujah and i want to particularly thank the youth of this church thank you thank you for your love thank you for your kindness your cooperation and um, please permit my bias to thank our daddy and our mommy mommy ojela day mommy god bless you thank you thank you thank you hallelujah we look forward to going to our house many times that was our place of reception my goodness it was good to preach when um, if you are aware of what what is the, the buffet waiting there you would preach and stretch yourself and uh, we preach because we loved God but those things were consolations <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the Lord and so I owe you as a church our prayers first and foremost he said brethren pray for us i believe that there are many other joshua selmans even greater than joshua selmans that god will continue to raise god's god's idea is never to have just one person or a few people <laughs> hallelujah our, our, our desire at this point is that our lives continue to remain models to inspire as many to know that there is nobody God cannot raise. There is nobody God cannot help. Hallelujah. The purpose of lifting, the purpose of influence is to have a more elevated platform to draw people to Jesus. Hallelujah. And so I sincerely, I needed to do this before we get into the miracle service because once we start teaching and ministering, that time may not come. So um, I made the announcement I made for those of you who followed on Sunday it was a deliberate um, announcement just to number one to let the world know that nobody rises in isolation sometimes when God helps us and lifts us we get to a position where we become too proud and too ashamed to let the world know that there were people who bent over backwards to allow us the leverage to rise hallelujah and I do this in public to inspire somebody. That local champion mentality, that sense of invincibility, even if you are Jesus, there has to be someone to help you carry the cross. Hallelujah. And so when people play significant roles in your life as you rise, do not be ashamed and do not be afraid to look back and say thank you. No matter how high you think God has lifted you, you cannot be too big to look down, look around and say thank you. Hallelujah. And to say it sincerely, not just pretentiously, just for television and all of that. People know where you are lying. They are, they are not stupid. Just because people are born again does not mean they threw away their reasoning. They know when you are playing games and wasting their time but they can discern the sincerity of your heart when they know you are true. Hallelujah. Sometimes God allows us to do some of these things in public because it becomes an inspiration for someone. Someone who is already being deviated by pride finds a reason to come back and say, so this is how this thing is done. And at your level, you can look for someone who has helped you thus far and say thank you. Many of you are surrounded by people who have given their heart taken risks with your life and yet we are not able to say thank you never become too big to say thank you never become too big no matter what you have no matter what you are the bible says a man can receive nothing except it is given unto him i know we live in a celebrity world where our obsession is to be celebrities photos sports lights and all those things but that is the reason why many people do not last hallelujah 
this balloon success you see up and down people celebrated and tomorrow they go down forever is because if you listen to my series the teachings that we've been having both failure and success if not managed well can produce the same result it can destroy you both failure and success failure can plant fear it can it can deflate your passion to continue whereas success can bring pride in discipline complacency hallelujah samson said i will arise as before and i will shake myself and he got up only to find out that that which kept the grace and the glory in his life had long left him hallelujah i'm praying for someone here already may you never be someone who was great may you never be someone who was an inspiration yeah. hallelujah that your life will consistently continue to inspire many yeah. in the name of jesus christ and so please new heritage baptist church accept my gratitude on behalf of myself and this great vision that god has placed in our hands hallelujah and I didn't come alone um, I thought in my heart to do this just to bring a seed of honor to the church and so we're planting a seed of 10 million naira as a blessing to the church hallelujah praise the name of the Lord hallelujah this is this is from the depth of my heart to the church to say thank you for all you have done hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord. Please, let's be seated. Hallelujah. We sing glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Forever. We sing glory to God. Glory to God. visit us yet again let your word come with power in jesus name please be seated hallelujah i just want to touch on one final subject let me request that you lend me your attention the lord put this in my heart and after that we'll get to pray and then to minister to the needs of god's people hallelujah I'll be teaching very briefly on the Holy Spirit. There is something about this that I want us to understand. Hallelujah. It is impossible to talk about the supernatural. It is impossible to talk about a victorious life. It is impossible to talk about a life of victory and dominion in isolation to this personality that was given by God as a gift to us so i'll just touch a few things and please i want us to listen hallelujah because everything that is going to be happening here tonight will be credited to the person and the ministry of the holy spirit two scriptures isaiah 32 and verse 15 isaiah 32 3 2 and verse 15 
let's read together one to read until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and the wilderness be a fruitful field and the fruitful field be counted for a forest the bible says no just 15 and that's fine that until the spirit is poured upon us just like rain from on high then every wilderness will be counted for a fruitful field and every fruitful field will be counted for a forest look at the transitions the moment the holy ghost arrives a wilderness can be turned to a fruitful field and a fruitful field can be turned into a forest hallelujah when jesus walked upon the earth even though he came as the word incarnate the son of the living god and we've spent yesterday night and this morning discussing on the various aspects as god has allowed us of light even the word of god hallelujah but when jesus walked upon the earth he seemed to be important as far as ability divine enablement were concerned until he had an encounter with the holy spirit himself even though he was the word of god the bible tells us in john chapter 1 and verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god verse 2 says the same was in the beginning with god verse 3 says all things were made by him and without him outside of him was not anything made that was made for says in him was life and that life was the light of man so light is not just scripture alone it is also life that life was the light of man hallelujah as powerful as all these descriptions as as documented by john are jesus walked upon the earth beginning as a baby in a manger who had to be hidden so that he would not be killed that meant he could die hallelujah and he grew up the bible does not give us too many events around the childhood of jesus just a few of them were recorded we know jesus as the baby born by mary and joseph and the magi coming to worship him presenting unto him gifts of gold frankincense and myrrh and then the next time we see jesus he is 12 years old are we together going to the temple to learn under the doctors of the law to a point that his parents came to look for him and they said where have you been and he says have you not read do you not know that i should be about my father's business and that's the end of it the next time we hear of jesus christ he is age 30 a full grown adult ready to begin his ministry so this prophet called john is baptizing hallelujah john is in the jordan baptizing and then he looks at this gentleman standing before him and john says behold the lamb of god who taketh away the sins of the world and jesus came to him to be baptized and john said i am not worthy to untie even the latchets of your shoes jesus replies and says suffer it to be so that scripture all scripture will be fulfilled and the bible says john led jesus to the river jordan and when he dipped him in water as he came out the heavens were opened the bible says and they saw the holy ghost descending in the similitude of a dove it came and rested upon jesus even though he was the word of god but the holy ghost had to come upon him and when he came and rested upon jesus there was a declaration from heaven one of the, the, the synoptic accounts will tell us and he says this is my beloved son it was a declaration in whom i am well pleased and the bible says from jordan there he was led straight to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil he prayed there for 40 days and 40 nights was tempted of satan and eventually he overcame by the word and the bible says he returned in the power of the spirit and that was the beginning of an extraordinary ministry the blind seeing the dead being raised to life 
miraculous manifestations nature miracles healing miracles hallelujah he spoke so audaciously when he began to teach after he called his disciples he began to mentor them and he taught them in a way that the bible says they were astonished at his doctrine and said we have never seen it in this fashion jesus was an invincible person he manifested the god life in such a dimension and such a proportion that was simply phenomenal he threatened the political and the religious powers of the day they didn't know what to do with him they held meetings upon meetings and said listen this man is becoming a threat he is giving the people an orientation that is making them ask all kinds of questions they caught a woman in adultery in the very act the bible says and brought her alone to jesus and jesus kept quiet stooped on the ground and wrote and say he who is without sin should cast the first stone the bible says they were convicted from the oldest to the youngest because the works of the flesh cannot save any man and they left the woman and said woman where are thine accusers he says neither do i condemn you go and sin no more that news spread abroad jarius's daughter the woman at the well all kind i mean every day was an episode of wonder from the life of this beloved son of god by the time we get to john chapter 14 chapter 15 chapter 16 he began to introduce this mysterious personality to the disciples hallelujah the bible says but the comforter jesus is speaking now he started introducing them to this personality and he said ladies and gentlemen paraphrasing you see the invincibility and the exploits that have come from my life it is not just because i am the son of god i left all that to become ordinary to become a man in every sense i have been empowered by this holy spirit and he began to propose to them an idea that there was the comforter who was going to come by the time we get to chapter 16 and verse 8 please give it to us jesus is still teaching talking about the holy spirit chapter 16 of the book of john and verse 8 john 16 from verse 8 john chapter 16 and verse 8 and when he is come he will reprove the world jesus now is describing the ministry of the holy spirit that when he comes he will reprove the world of sin of righteousness and of judgment verse 9 it says of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because i go to my father and ye see me no more verse 11 of judgment because the prince of this world is judged now he speaks to his people i have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear he shall speak unto you and the bible says he will show you things to come verse 14 he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and he shall show it to you this is jesus speaking i can tell you that the disciples did not have an idea what he was saying they were just impressed that jesus was speaking as usual hallelujah now jesus gave himself to die and as soon as that was over when he resurrected in acts chapter 1 the bible says he gathered them again and for a period of 40 days he began to speak to them concerning the things that pertain unto the kingdom the disciples now asked him and said will you at this point restore the nation of israel and he said it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the father has kept within his care acts 1 verse 8 but you shall receive power he said after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in jerusalem in judea in samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth a pharisee shows up in the book of acts and he has this strange encounter with the god of the bible and after 19 years there about in the wilderness of arabia he came back as a fiery apostle 
with an uncanny dimension of spiritual insight and it was Paul who was helping us understand the secret behind the ministry of exploits of Jesus the Pauline epistles were full of several testaments credited to the Holy Spirit Apostle Peter was another magnificent apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ he was the chief among all of the disciples and it was him that God used to bring the salvation of the Gentiles of which we are part of and in Acts chapter 10 in the house of Cornelius when you read from verse 38 Peter made a very profound statement I hope we're still following he said how God anointed Jesus so that thing that happened in Jordan was beyond baptism it was Peter now by the Spirit speaking as an apostle to say what happened that day was beyond just dipping in water and a voice speaking from heaven that what happened that day was that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with number one the Holy Ghost number two with power number one with the Holy Ghost number two with power the bible says on the strength of the holy spirit and the empowerment that had come from him he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him this for us has become a template today that everyone who desires to go about doing good and healing all day that were oppressed of the devil must ensure that like Jesus he is anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power are we together that it takes more than a sincere desire to help the oppressed it takes more than a sincere desire to glorify Jesus the wickedness that has plagued lives and destinies and families it takes more than a well-intentioned heart that men must be empowered by the Holy Ghost to be able to make any kingdom sense as far as the revelation of Jesus is concerned the Holy Spirit has largely been misunderstood by so many people we have reduced him to just a Pentecostal phenomenon reduced him for many people just to praying in tongues and you know all kinds of charismatic manifestations and that's the end of it so to the average believer when you talk about the Holy Spirit in their minds they just think oh that personality that makes people to fall down and shout and that's the end of it and that's the one who empowers people to pray in the spirit and that's the end of it but there is more to the Holy Spirit let me just by way of summary reveal to you his threefold ministry very quickly number one it's important for you to appreciate that the Holy Spirit is God the Holy Spirit is not an archangel the Holy Spirit is not one of the seraphs he's not a cherubim he's not one of the 24 elders the Holy Spirit is God are we together now this is very important you find that in Acts chapter 5 from verse 3 and verse 4 Peter said why has Satan filled thy heart to lie against the Holy Ghost so Ananias and Sapphira remember the story they lied against the Holy Ghost but verse 4 Peter again is speaking and he's saying thou hast not lied unto men but unto God so he equates the Holy Ghost as God are we together now the Holy Spirit has a threefold ministry number one his first ministry is to the entire creation his ministry is not just to humans alone no way before there was any manifestation of any human being the Holy Ghost was already hovering the uh, across the face of the waters remember yes the Holy Spirit has a ministry to creation he literally is the manifestation of the life of God to creation I know that biology through the centuries have taught us that the reason why plants and animals are able to thrive well is because of a healthy blend of you know the elements of nature the Sun the wind water and this is true in as much as we know but I submit to you by the authority of Scripture you leave every other element intact 
and withdraw the presence of the Holy Spirit, the entire life form as we know will die. If there is anything alive in the earth, biologically and so on and so forth, it is because the Holy Spirit is the life-giving agency of God. Whether it is to plants, to animals, to creation, hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit has a ministry to the entire creation. That is the reason why he will never be taken from the earth. And when he is withdrawn from the earth, all that will be left in the earth is death and judgment. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit has a ministry to plants, to animals, to the entire creation. The earth is intact today because of his presence. Number two, the Holy Spirit has a ministry to unbelievers. If you really want to see the global harvest, you want to see unbelievers saved, you cannot do that in isolation to the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Bible clearly tells us, John 16, where we read earlier, from verse 8 to 11, that he has a ministry to unbelievers, the unsaved, that when he comes, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment this is a profound miracle that whilst you are preaching as a man of god people are listening to you and the holy ghost is moving through the hearts of men revealing jesus through your messages moving past the frailty of your communication and convicting men of sin of righteousness and judgment no man has enough intelligence to make another man leave his seat and come and stand to declare the lordship of jesus it takes the convicting power of the holy spirit hallelujah yes you will never have people truly saved except you respect his ministry and you allow him walk through you so whilst the preacher is speaking in the midst of our frailty and limitation as far as communication is concerned he's able to move past us and move through us and convict the world of sinners and bring them to the cross the holy spirit he is the one who will turn your unsaved son to become a mighty man he is the one who will turn your unsaved spouse he is called the lord of the harvest it is illegal to get into the harvest field and ignore him if you come into a field that is my own when ruth was coming into boaz's farm she had to acknowledge that he was the owner there she didn't just badge into the farm and ignore him even though she started by gleaning but when she saw him she acknowledged him you don't come into a field and ignore the owner the bible calls the holy spirit the lord of the harvest it is impossible especially if you're a minister of the gospel you will never see the global harvest just on the wings of intellect or on the wings of um, technology these things are wonderful but they are barren and impotent except by the command and the endorsement of the lord of the harvest the reason why many people do not see unsaved people saved is because we over depend on intellect we over depend on other resources outside of his person and his power who would have turned saul into paul who had the power to convince that intellectual person by what book would you use to have turned paul saul to become paul only the holy spirit hallelujah the same disciples that denied jesus peter ran away from jesus all the disciples literally ran away these were people who jesus they were not the ones to be crucified just to identify with him they ran away yet when the holy spirit came upon them many of them died rejoicing regardless what happened they would flog peter he would be in the prison and instead of him to think about how to run out of that city he was writing a letter from the prison warning the people to say i've heard that some of you are misbehaving just to let you know that i'm coming as soon as i come out of this prison i'm coming to have a seminar in that your place and correct certain things what passion it has to take the holy spirit when the holy spirit showed up he announced his presence not just by praying in tongues but a harvest of three thousand people in a moment when peter was done speaking by the holy ghost they were so convicted they said men and brethren what do we do he said repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise for it is unto you to your children your children's children 
can i tell you we will never see our children our spouses we will never see the nations come to the obedience of the cross if we do not believe in him this is why those who are changing the world from a kingdom perspective are ordinary people people who have come to a point where they have acknowledged that the best of my strength is not sufficient to bring the harvest and you will find ordinary people like reinhard bonke of blessed memory are we together now or tl osborne of blessed memory very frail and simple people you listen to them and their sermons were so you listen to a sermon of a person like billy graham and while he's talking if you ever have a chance to watch his crusades there's nobody charging any atmosphere no instrument playing and you see everybody looking at him you will wonder if these people are receiving anything wait till he makes the altar call and you see people intellectuals all kinds of people that man saved kings he saved atheists sworn unbelievers who caused god to their faces when they listen to him by the power of this spirit if you embrace the ministry of the holy spirit there is no limit to how far he can go to bring unbelievers to jesus hallelujah but for the purpose of our discussion tonight I want to focus on his ministry to believers so the holy spirit has a ministry to the entire creation a ministry to unbelievers hallelujah and then the ministry to believers this is very powerful his first ministry to believers is to provide guidance and direction this is very simple but don't assume you understand what i'm saying the holy spirit was sent by jesus to us to provide guidance and to provide direction why do we need to be guided because we are not we are not omnipresent we are not omnipotent and we are not omniscient the only person who does not need guidance is god and it's because of these three attributes to be omnipresent means you are everywhere at the same time the psalmist said where can i hide from your presence to be omnipotent means you are all powerful not desiring any assistance whatsoever to be omniscient means you are all knowing you do not need to be taught nobody lectures god nobody mentors him who will be the lecturer what will be the basis of his qualification it is in his light that we see light hallelujah are we together yes when he became a man jesus he learned because he submitted himself to the frailty of men but as god he is omniscient hallelujah and because men you and i the greatest of us you you find our limitations intelligently documented in first corinthians 13 he says though i speak with tongues of men and of angels and i have not love i am nothing are we together and then paul begins to speak and then he makes a very profound statement i think in chapter 8 or 11 one of those he says we see in part and we prophesy in part of verse 8 or 11 or there about from verse 8 downwards we see in part do you know what that means that means the greatest of us is still limited in terms of knowledge there are things we do not know thank you verse 9 that is the reason why we need to be guided why do we need to be guided by the spirit because there is a way that cement right onto a man and the bible says the end thereof you can be walking in a wrong path for two decades only to find out you've been wasting your time and god does not want you to be on that journey of risking and wasting your life and destiny because destiny is a function of time whatever you give your time to you give a portion of your life to so if you were if god is giving you the privilege of living 90 years and you waste 30 years in confusion you see that it will take the grace and the mercy of god for you to recover and some of you even before you got born again you were already far off in terms of confusion and error now that you are saved some even got saved late you need the one who is able to guide you and to direct you hallelujah proverbs 3 and verse 5 says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding it says in all your ways acknowledge him help me and he shall direct your path 
in this wicked world he shall direct your path he's the one who knows the hearts of men direct your path he's the one who knows the region where your blessings reside direct your path if you choose your own direction by yourself you will make the mistake of lot lot used intellect to choose a place and he went to settle near sodom by the time abraham came to save him he was in the center of sodom many of us if god were to allow you choose you would get up and just imagine i should be in america or i should be in uk or i should be in lagos or i should be in abuja only the spirit of the living god who has access to the mind of god knows he can look at the archives the blueprint of your destiny where are you supposed to be at this point and he will direct you with precision you see when destiny is location dependent anywhere cannot be the zone for actualizing destiny did you hear what i said yes sir there is always a location component to destiny actualization you can have a sincere vision but if you are in a wrong location the holy spirit he can hold your hand and direct you and through the foolishness of your obedience to his leadership as frail as you look your life will keep navigating paths until you find yourself stationed in an enviable position some of us have followed him with childlike obedience not even knowing where he was taking us but believing that he was knowledgeable enough to command you have given your attention to things with lesser knowledge why not trust him with your life There are many young people who are trusting God for direction in life. Apostle, I don't know what I want to become. You don't just go and sit down and type, what should I become? Enter. No, you, you're, you're going to ruin your destiny because there are demon spirits out to destroy your life. Are we together now? And you've heard me say, not every open door is a door of breakthrough. Even the prison has a door. So just because a door is open, be verify where you are entering even if it's a prison you are entering it it has to happen by an open door there are many people who have who have handled open doors to their peril their shame and their disaster listen there are some of you by reason of this teaching this is already a word for you that you will ruin your family your wife and your children if you do not stay and say holy spirit guide me i have i have done everything i know to do but it is clear that i am limited in my knowledge today i want to go to canada tomorrow i hear something about canada that does not sound nice and I said, look let me change this thing to uk next tomorrow i say i want to go to lagos and even in lagos now i say i think the island is there opportunities and then next you see your life you will give yourself heart attack for nothing the holy spirit are you getting me now he can direct you as a man of god waiting for people to just give you blind theories that are not proven will frustrate you you will find yourself pegged in a place that is completely anti your destiny the holy spirit can guide us the holy spirit can direct us number two what is the holy spirit's ministry to the believer the holy spirit is the revealer of the will and the word of god this is very powerful and this is profound the holy spirit can reveal the will of god and reveal the word of god to the believer the holy spirit is also called the spirit of revelation everything that has to do with light insight and revelation resides within his office you cannot ignore the person and the ministry of the holy spirit and expect to have access to insight scriptural insights and prophetic insights because the bible says he will show you things to come hallelujah scriptural insights look at this please look up this bible you see as much as it's a historic book if the only thing you do is to just read it like a novel you will not find anything the only thing you will find there is just a compendium of conflicting statements 
at the end of it you will join the historians to be angry and say these guys are just dumb people who just confuse us by documenting this because the bible you see is a prophetic material that it is not just the opening of it that brings light there are scrolls you cannot unlock the scrolls you can only open book it is the holy ghost that can unlock the scrolls but when he unlocks the scrolls verses that are not supposed to make sense start connecting themselves this is what revelation is about there is nobody who has been trusted with the grace for revelation that does not acknowledge the ministry of the holy spirit revelation is beyond the realm of intellect intellect only supports your understanding but believe me if you do not respect the holy ghost as a preacher get ready for empty pews in this end time because the holy spirit is the one who opens up the mysteries in this book one scripture to another one scripture after another day before yesterday i went to bed preparing to come the night before I came here yesterday, now day before yesterday, into yesterday, I just had a little nap, and in that nap, someone, a radio was playing, and a very powerful prophetic song was playing through that radio. I've not even sang it. I'm waiting till I go, and then I'll sing it for my people. This is how some of these songs we receive come in. You see? I can't even remember it, so don't even tempt me. I just recorded it and left it there now you will be surprised that these songs will come and they will become another ladder of revival and you'll be wondering how do you do it the holy spirit it is not the wisdom of men ladies and gentlemen yes there is a limit to what you can do there are many sermons you see me teach i see them in visions and dreams in the place of prayer i just see the topic and the lord says this is what to direct the people and when we get up the world is clapping we are wise enough to know that this is the one the spirit of god the one holding our hands and doing all the supernatural extraordinary things that are happening the holy spirit is the spirit of revelation he can show you one insight from scripture and open up your heart and don't say i'm not a preacher how about you a businessman the bible says and i will give you the treasures of darkness remember darkness is a place of haziness your vision is not clear it is only the holy spirit who can reach down into darkness and tell you you want to prosper in lagos do this do that it does not make sense but in that childlike obedience you begin to rewrite your narrative hallelujah you believe that yes, sir. the holy spirit is the spirit of revelation you need him revelation from scripture and prophetic insight into what your destiny is going to be about i shared with you for those of you who were here in the morning how that the holy spirit gave me one instruction about a, a decade and a few years ago that i obeyed with childlike faith that became the ladder to him announcing me to the nations let me tell you there is there are formulas that can guide us into success but everybody's destiny is like a dna it's only the whole what one person did to succeed you will do it and you will fail woefully hallelujah somebody may have had the courage to just walk up to a destiny helper and say i need help and the man will say i like you because god directed him and the person can just give him 10 or 100 million naira go and start a business so when the person is doing a seminar he will say look i this is my story i walked up to somebody you go and walk up to somebody when you are not directed especially in this time where people are afraid of kidnappers and all of that you see that now the power the result happens because he said so you go and meet somebody and the person will say am i related to you no they will arrest you and that can begin the beginning of trouble in your life so these are not the days of blindly copying people and say because this is what men are doing you have to go to him and say you are the spirit of revelation what is the blueprint for my life for god's sake please listen to what i'm telling you what is the blueprint unique to my own life unique to my own life please lay your hands on your head in one minute and cry for a baptism of the spirit of revelation go ahead and pray
go ahead and pray lord i'm not ready to make foolish decisions in this sensitive moment of destiny spirit of the living god you have guided ordinary men to great lives and destinies i pray and i cry outside are you praying lay your hands on your head and ask the lord to give you a revelation open up scripture to me open up my prophecy reveal the blueprint of my destiny let it not be that i'm wasting my time in lagos whereas my destiny is in the u.s whereas my helpers are in the uk let it not be that i'm in uk whereas i should be back in nigeria spirit of the living god you are the revealer of the will of god ah you are the revealer the business i am doing did i just decide to do it or did it come as prophetic insight Please pray. Especially if your life has been tied. You are in a, a T-junction in destiny. Not knowing whether to go left or to go right. This is where great men are bought destiny. Because it takes the Holy Spirit to guide you. You can do well for 20 years. And fear of for one year and that begins you will destroy your ministry overnight spirit of revelation help me more love keep praying more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life more love is someone praying more power more of you in my life more love more power hallelujah hallelujah you are a minister of the gospel here and you are praying and say god announce me without the spirit of revelation you will only disgrace yourself before the world in one month you will preach every revelation you have and you will not have any other thing to say the spirit of the living god and the spirit of revelation is responsible for freshness i i preach an average of say three to five messages every week on average you can't be faking this no it has to be by the spirit to maintain newness and freshness for many years hallelujah yes most of us have rejected that revelatory dimension of the holy spirit call on to me is it in your bible and i will answer for god's sake i will show you great and mighty things this is a generation that does not understand the value of his presence we are always in a rush wanting to be seen see the secret of relevance is to learn to stay lord should i pursue this was the secret of great men in the bible they were not careless with decisions don't assume that this is the business god wants you to do don't assume ask questions and stay till he answers it's better to take, make only five decisions in your lifetime but let them be decisions that were directed by God it will be enough to give you a great destiny than to have 200 decisions and 190 of them are decisions in the flesh are you ready to endure that kind of pain the Spirit of God is responsible for revelation someone after this conference you need to go and have a day or two for a retreat and that the theme of that retreat is the next level of destiny 
stay with God and cry and say Lord you created me I'm tired of roaming around I just got a job after one month they threw me away I've been in Lagos and I don't even know no job no friends no nothing my life is just moving God you did not create me to be a non-entity like this don't forbear with failure if things are not working don't just laugh go back and verify Lord what is it is it that I did not hear you and take responsibility hallelujah a few days before we start in Abuja I went back to pray again and said Lord I believe you spoke to me I verified but please let me cry one more time is it me in the flesh or is this you and if you say you are not the one my hands are off I don't care what the world says hallelujah are we together the spirit of revelation learn to ask God questions you see I told you prayerlessness is pride if you are not one who is given to prayer is pride because you are declaring self-sufficiency outside of the help of God one of the greatest expressions of humility is to be prayerful that you can go and inquire of the Lord I am frail oh God if you depend on my wisdom I will mislead people if I depend on my knowledge I am limited what is your blueprint and God says because you have sought me come let me show you and he will show you things about your life you will just emerge like an eagle and men will look at you and marvel and wonder by what wisdom are you able to do this if we're together say amen. amen let me give you one more ministry of the Holy Spirit to the believer and then we'll pray the Holy Spirit is responsible for the empowerment of believers the Holy Spirit is responsible for spiritual empowerment the Holy Spirit is responsible for spiritual empowerment. Acts 10 38. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost. In other words, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. If the Holy Ghost does not come into your life, you will never be able to access genuine spiritual power people have asked me questions time and again and say what is the secret usually that's the question what is the secret behind the hand of God upon your life and I tell them look at me this is all of me you are seeing it's not like there is a part of me sitting somewhere this is all of it can an ordinary man do these things that you see no it is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit this is what makes ordinary men to do extraordinary things how do you speak over someone's life and say in the name of Jesus let doors open and then the person returns and says look what has happened can a man do that no Nicodemus taught us already he came to Jesus by night in John chapter 3 and verse 2 and he says rabbi we know that thou art a teacher sent from God for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him except except Luke chapter 1 and verse 34 angel gabriel comes to visit a young virgin and tells her that she is going to be with child how be it without a man and she was surprised she asked a very intelligent question how shall these things be give us verse 34 again seeing that i know not a man i always use this scripture to provoke people how shall this business thrive seeing that i do not have a helper how shall I rise from my lowly estate seeing that this is a family of 12 people and I am even the last child how can I arise from this family like you have said the answer is in verse 35 it says the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you that is the secret that is the secret to an extraordinary life an extraordinary business an extraordinary destiny 
Alléluia. I believe what I'm telling you. I'm not just teaching it as a sermon. It is my life. You have no idea what the Holy Ghost can do as far as connecting the dots to your destiny is concerned. He will pick someone from end to end of the earth and bring them to you if it, if it is required for your life and your destiny. The victorious life depends on his empowerment. This is what someone came to church tonight to do. You are a man of God and you have struggled in ministry to a point that your wife is asking you, darling, are you really called? I'm not going to divorce you, but are you called? Because I'm tired of this shame and embarrassment. You have said God will heal. People said amen. Nobody was healed. You have said people will get miracle jobs. People are tired of shouting amen with no results. It is not insincerity. You may have ignored his ministry businessmen intellect is wonderful the value that you provide is wonderful but in a spiritual world you will need more than that to command dominion go and ask non-christians when they are done with all the board meetings and they do all the simulations and discussions they go back in the night and consult all kinds of mediums and diabolic means to back that spiritual component has to be there because james 2 26 says for a body without a spirit is dead your business is a body it needs a spirit to make it alive your ministry is a body it needs a spirit components yeah. hallelujah praise the name of the lord let me tell you sincerely even these finances that you see please look up this is such a big issue in the life of believers right now these finances there are people who have done everything they know to do these finances is not answering there now there are lazy people but there are hard-working people like peter they have gone to the seaside they have trained as fishermen they have the correct net they have caught they have thrown their nets and yet they could not catch fish because it is not entirely just a natural thing there is a spiritual side to it hallelujah thou shall remember the lord thy god for it is he that giveth thee the power if all it took to prosper in the kingdom were brain work god will not waste his power but he's telling you if you are a slave under pharaoh teach me the creativity that will make pharaoh give you money value only works when you are when you live in a free world where there is meritocracy and biases and sentiments of men do not exist at that point the value you bring you bring it to a level playing ground but in a world that has been marred by political biases tribal prejudices you need an advantage in addition to your value are we together if you are a prisoner under pharaoh and he has vowed that you will be a slave Teach me, ladies and gentlemen, the business intelligence that will suddenly make Pharaoh bow to you. When he has vowed that you will be a slave, even the straw that helps you to make the, the, the building, he will take it away from you. At that point, oh, what you need is beyond creativity. You need God to come in with nine plagues and even one more to dislodge Pharaoh and then allow him to dismiss you with gold that you will use to build the house of God with hallelujah because there are many business people who when we teach like this they just say no no leave this teaching this holy spirit part to preachers when you are about to prophesy breakthrough i can say amen in today's world it is spiritual in any way you will see somebody who just got a job and by the next day his legs start swelling and he just hit it in a stone but the swelling does not stop in one month they will tell you they want to amputate both legs don't tell me it was just a stone there are wicked forces that exist and if you don't believe it keep living in this wicked world sooner or later you will collide with wickedness the bible calls them arrows that fly by day noisome pestilences destructions that waste in noonday and if you must live a victorious life you need the empowerment of the holy spirit there are two reasons why we need the power of the holy spirit reason number one is because you
cannot achieve the purposes of the kingdom in the strength of the flesh no matter who you are no matter how intelligent you are no matter how exposed you are this is a spiritual kingdom you cannot ignore spirituality and excel in life life is spiritual more than intellectual more than sociological it took the spirit realm to birth the physical realm that you see hebrews 11 and verse 3 through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear the immaterial reality is the mother of this material realm hallelujah there are people who have spent decades abroad only to return back looking like the spirit that has kept their families down they will tell you i have been 20 years in america and they return back as though they deported them not 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 even the money to have a single block and you are saying what kind of thing is this that is the devil for you how about people who start rising and it's like there is a spiritual meter in the realm of the spirit the moment you look like you are the horn that is rising to wipe the tears of your family they take you down immediately you find out that someone my head my head and he just dies and they say it was typhoid that killed him you are smart is it really typhoid that killed him no these are spirits that have vowed that nobody will rise when you read Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18, please give it to us. I hope God is speaking to someone. Zechariah 1 18, 1 8. Then I lifted up my eyes and behold, I saw how many horns? A horn is a symbol of authority. And I said to the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered your praise, your peace. And your covenant the bible says they have scattered judah your praise they have scattered jerusalem your peace they have scattered israel your promise these are horns that scatter people's destinies next verse please and the lord showed me four carpenters and he said what are these horns come to do he said these are the horns that have scattered judah please read with me so that no man did lift up his head stop there are you seeing that there are horns no man don't lift up his head but you say apostle i'm doing well even though i'm not prayerful you just continue they are watching you are not the only one watching oh there is a meter in the realm of the spirit when you rise to a threshold in one year that's why you see people rise for decades ceo doing well wealthy with estates and if job could go down in one day you will be joking to believe that the devil if unassisted by the power of god cannot bring you down a man as wealthy as job how can a man lose his estate his children his reputation in 24 hours that is the mundanity of life without the empowerment of the spirit everything can vanish one person empowered by a demon spirit can manipulate a document in your company and you will spend the remaining part of your life dealing with a court case and if you are unfortunate and you have the kind of judge that was in Luke 18 that does not fear God or regard men you can't bribe him you can't pray against him hallelujah true story i know a man who had built his company on a property and after about 15 years some boys just got up and i think they found one document true story that something something i think happened between his grandfather who really owned that land and those guys got a lawyer and they wrecked that man's life into pieces they said there was an agreement i don't know if they finished the court case today they have spent money and spent money grounded the business because they they valued it and did all kinds of things and said somebody did not do something that was correct and my goodness you see here eh? if men decide to fight you only god can help you let me say it again if men decide to fight you only god can help you
hallelujah you need empowerment because you cannot achieve the purposes of the kingdom in the strength of the flesh number two darkness is real you need empowerment the realm of the spirit the realm of evil is real this is not to scare you it is the truth jesus himself acknowledged the fact that we live in a world where evil is real and you don't wait until the day it comes to you it may be too late hallelujah it be too late many years ago one night i was praying i was in a period of prayer fasting and then the ceiling of my room suddenly vanished and i saw a vision of this creature this wild creature looking like a dinosaur and he was looking at me with fiery eyes and he made a statement he said so you think you can bring god's people into abundance and it just vanished there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones but only a shua will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength but only a shua will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end someone met me one time and said apostle I want you to pray because I think there's a spirit on my life that makes good things to leave me. Somebody comes and says, I want to see your parents. That's the end of it. By the next day, it looks like a, it's as if somebody speaks to his ears and say, do you want to die? Or somebody gives me a job. And the moment that happens, the company starts going down. And the man goes for prayer and they said, there's somebody you employed. Get that lady out of the company. And they just come by morning and say, young lady, you are hereby dismissed. No questions. We are downsizing. You are just a victim. But he will not tell you somebody had prayed and said, you are carrying bad luck and you brought to their office. Anything that is not of God this night, in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, any planting, any embargo sitting on anybody's life, programming evil and pain in the name of jesus he must give up on you finally he must give up on you finally please sit down we'll soon rise up to pray i'm taking our time to teach like this because this is the most important component the prayer and all of this can happen within minutes you see that this is what you need to take back for some of you this is the missing link to your destiny spirit of the living god i return to you now i see that you are beyond just a pentecostal phenomenon spirit of the living god you are beyond just a prayer language you are the gift of god sent to me to see to it that my life becomes and remains victorious if jesus needed the holy spirit as the son of god then every one of us needs the holy spirit hallelujah do you believe that mama you need the holy spirit it takes more than a motherly sympathy to raise five boys with this age of internet no you would die of high blood pressure for nothing children now will ask you questions you cannot sleep again gone are the days you off a television and everything is off but you off it they own it on their phones and they will ask you questions that as an adult you are saying what is this who taught you what who is bringing this trouble to my house hallelujah there are young people now that will go all it takes is to just watch a two minutes video about scientology or some world religion and they are initiated into all kinds of gangs all kinds of things and they return back and only ask you one question who is god the father the son or the holy spirit 
and now you stand there and say i never asked my pastor this question what kind of a child are you that at this age you are already asking me this question welcome to a complicated world that needs the holy spirit to be able to create a synergy out of it hallelujah praise the name of the lord i hope you believe what we're sharing there are some of you you began projects till now till now you've not been able to complete it now i'm not i'm, I'm just challenging you because grace is coming on you tonight It takes more than intelligent architecture and engineering to put a structure on the ground and to finally zinc it, to put a ribbon around it and to cut it in your lifetime. In this wicked world, only God helps men. There is a name God is called Ebenezer. Ebenezer, he is the helper of men. If God does not, he said, Uzziah prospered because he was mightily helped someone shout help me lord help me. one more time say help me lord. help me lord you wake up in the morning in this same lagos and you pass breakthrough and favor from morning till night but none of it comes to you no tonight is the night you are receiving your portion you are receiving your portion in the name of jesus do you believe this make up your mind that you will not share the grace tonight leaving anything that should come into your destiny no it must come this night that you came to receive you came with your heart open jesus left us the holy spirit now you understand isaiah 32 and verse 15 until the spirit be poured upon us like rain what farmer becomes so proud and says i don't need rain I don't need water. I am so intelligent. My soil is loamy soil. My seed is very good. Rain, you can go places. I show you a farmer who is about to be disappointed. No matter how serious that farmer is, that rain becomes an advantage. Is that true? That even if you decide to plant in dry season, you will have to simulate a system, get water to that farm until the spirit be poured upon us be poured upon joshua selman be poured upon koinonia be poured upon new heritage baptist church be poured upon your children be poured upon your destiny be poured upon your business the bible says watch this now i hope you know that the holy spirit does not just come upon men the holy spirit is also master over darkness the first mention of darkness in the bible it was him that collided with that darkness so you introduce him to your pain introduce him to the causes introduce him to the yokes holy ghost there is a cause that is keeping people down i hand you over to that cause that familiar spirit that has taken away the glory of man in my life and my family I hand you over the Bible says there was darkness 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 and the Holy Ghost hovered around the face of the deep ah, hand him over to that disappointment hand it to him I'm tired of carrying this pain. I'm tired of carrying this shame, carrying this disappointment, this embargo on my head. Spirit of the living God, I hand over my life in its entirety to you. I hand over my husband to you. I don't know what is happening to him. It looks like he's changing for the bad. I hand over my wife. I hand over my children. I hand over the ministry. The business is going down. I hand it over to you. You are a master over darkness.
Alléluia. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please hear me. Tonight, God is going to do four things in this place very quickly. Number one, we are going to have a few minutes to pray. An ancient doors tied down, but not by God. That in the place of prayer, those doors will be scattered and open once and for all. hallelujah number two i'm going to be praying for men and women people in this place the bible says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of jacob all these manipulations of darkness sitting over anyone's destiny i am telling you by god who sent me tonight it must give up on you finally hallelujah number three i'm going to be praying for the sick i told you yesterday your body needs to be healthy for you to remain if your body is broken down i don't care what the name of the situation is it is the devil trying to destroy your life hallelujah and then number four we are going to be agreeing together that beginning from tonight in prophecy that God will elevate you elevate your children as, as I pray over your prayer requests this is what I want you to agree please for the next 15 or 20 minutes let be spiritual and be discerning do not allow your word come and then by carelessness for some of us God is redeeming 20 years tonight redeeming 15 years tonight the, the years that the locust has eaten the canker worm God is redeeming it tonight hallelujah if you can stand stand hallelujah do you know there are some of you here the ministry that god has given you this night the mantle of your destiny listen listen this is not everybody but believe me there are people it's time the excuses you are giving is over it's time for certain graces to find you i'm talking of destiny fire the kind of fire that will ignite your life and with it you will ignite the nations hallelujah hallelujah do you believe this yes, one prayer point and then we'll allow the lord to just descend upon us father everything you intend to do in my life tonight let it happen by the spirit someone pray everything 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 the fire you have designed to fall upon me oh god of heaven let it fall The deliverance the healing change my story change my name from Jacob to Israel Saul to Paul Cephas to Peter hallelujah 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 praise the name of the Lord praise the name of the Lord I'm seeing fire 
this is what I'm seeing the Lord is showing me I'm seeing fire just moving across and hear me the Lord is saying to me that the fire that is falling now is not just for individuals there are individuals representing families so you will be surprised that what is happening to you is reaching your loved ones where they are right now I decree and declare every family here that has been bound by witchcraft bound by apocatos you help them in the name of Jesus be delivered now let that apache break it at her. let that fire engulf you right now in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah now please hear me because of space we are not going to be able to bring people out but I want you to help them hallelujah hallelujah I'm seeing the feet of people and the Lord is telling me the number 11 that everybody in your family has been tied down help that lady they can't seem to be able to move but right now fire is falling everywhere inside and outside I lose you now I lose you now I lose you now I lose your siblings help that woman please my God help them please they lose now 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 now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is hear me every covenant that has tied your destiny that said you will not move forward right now as I'm speaking I'm seeing the hands of men catching fire let that fire descend on you now I set you free now I set you free now I set you free now in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah I'm hearing in my spirit shame and reproach watch this there are many of you here you look at your life the only thing men can see is shame and reproach there's no honor and there's no dignity and it's the enemy that has done this whether you are a gentleman whether, or a lady whether you are an elderly person or a young person every embargo of shame hanging on your destiny here at new heritage baptist church right now be released 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 open your mouth in one minute and declare that i am finally free from anything that is not of god is someone praying here finally he who the sun sets free is free indeed free indeed up the balcony are you praying the overflows make sure you are praying hallelujah 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 the Lord is ministering to me that there are some of you here he has been guiding you for years because you are the one ordained to be a deliverer watch this now over your family and the Lord is saying the grace to make this happen you may be the least but there is an anointing now not everybody Lord I don't know where they are but everybody destined to be a deliverer receive that anointing now receive that grace now please help them receive that anointing now help this woman please receive that anointing now in the name of Jesus Christ receive that anointing now
Alleluia. Alleluia. We are still praying. No, don't be tired. This is your destiny. You must testify. Now, hear me, please. The Lord is asking me to minister to people. You have seen repetitive patterns. Something happening to your mother happening to you. Something happening to your brother happening to you. The blood of Jesus was sent for this very reason. He said for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy all the works of darkness. I want to break patterns right now. You saw poverty from your parents is still working in your life. You saw all kinds of things that women don't stay in their marital homes. And even though you are a Christian, the devil now wants to plague you. Anyone here under the sound of my voice, every repetition of patterns, right now, the anointing is coming on you. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. hallelujah hallelujah when joshua in the bible when joshua led the nation of israel help those under the anointing and they brought down jericho joshua left a curse there and said curse be anybody who tries to rebuild he will build it on the blood of his firstborn and complete it on the blood of his lastborn when you read the bible in later years there were people who came not even knowing what had happened and they tried to rebuild jericho again they lost their firstborn and they lost the lastborn it's not your fault that you came from the family you have come from so let me speak over your life if there has been any pronouncement and anything that is not of god now you are a christian you are a child of god i don't care if they worship idols i don't care if they worship deities if they bury people alive the bible says if any man be in christ he is a new creation therefore i declare let the blood separate you forever separate you forever separate your dreams forever separate your destiny forever hallelujah whether you come from the east or you come from the west or you come from the north the middle belt wherever i am saying it again if there is anything that has been deposited to the earth and by bloodline you are a victim of it and it's affecting you today i call upon the one who died and rose again shedding his blood for the remission of sins be free from it now hallelujah they saw a man who was born blind and the disciples asked jesus a question who sinned that this man was born blind was it him or his father there was something jesus had taught them how can his father's sin be the reason for his blindness jesus would have said you are wrong but he said neither but that the glory of the lord should be made manifest physically speaking if you are a multi-millionaire chances are excellent that your child will also be a millionaire because you are not a wicked father you will put structures in place am i right on that everybody transfers what you are carrying if that is true physically it will be naive for you to believe that spiritually that is not true there can be an exception but not by folding your arms remember what i taught you yesterday because it is finished in christ does not mean it to automatically be administered to you it takes you engaging the word with understanding to appropriate it in your life hallelujah there are some of you by now based on the prophetic blueprint you should not be at this level and listen the devil you know what delay is 
delay is not stagnation there are two different things they are all dangerous stagnation is that you are standing in the same position and the only thing growing is your age nothing else is growing in your life delay is that your pace relative to the time allotted to your destiny is so slow hallelujah so slow something that god can help you do in one year you will take forever i'm saying this because i want to pray a serious prayer now there are some of you your life has never been straight it took six years for a four-year course are we together now a job that you have to do your verifications in three days they did yours in six months it is not normal and don't sit down and just smile and say everything is all right because it is not hallelujah and you see the same thing happening a little boy who should complete um, primary school you, you understand what I, or high school something now begins to happen a bring that same a, elongated tragedies see the unit of destiny is time you do not have all the time for everything there are some of you right now based on the prophetic blueprint in your life you should have sorted your basic needs and now begun to reach out to people you cannot leave destiny if at age 40 50 you are still looking for rent i'm not insulting you i came here to help you it is an anomaly when will you sort your life and now begin to help your siblings it's a spirit that's why you see respectfully speaking parents die and the children have to pay the price before starting their own life especially in africa so you find in a family of 15 people only one person is able to lift up his head he is any one million but what is that relative to all the people you know i'm not lying and God wants to set you free. It's a satanic thing. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. There is a spirit in Africa that does not allow people to be established early. If you are ever established early, people look at you and, and say it's not normal. At 20, you are already done with school and you have a job. No, that should not be. Hallelujah. I made up my mind. That everything I did not enjoy in my life, nobody coming from me will have to suffer it again. Let me pay the price in Christ once and for all. Hallelujah. Don't transfer the pain you went through and give another person. Let it end with you. Are we together? Let your child not come and meet you and say, Mommy, somebody appeared to me in a dream. And you say, they've started coming to you too. No, no. Let it end with you. Let it end with you. Are we together now? In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. I know someone for five years, true story, he's not been able to go abroad to meet his wife. They just got married a few weeks ago and she had to rush. In fact, they had to rush the marriage because she was going to school. And as she went, you know, just smiled and thought he would just have his visa stamped in one or two months and join the wife. Five years now. He's not seen his wife except by this. They've done everything. They've met people. They've done whatever it is. They still could not trace higher, mighty, and everything. I told the man, my friend, stop going to the embassy. Come and flog it out with destiny first. The embassy does not care whether you will after 10 years. No. When you see certain prolonged patterns that don't make sense, be spiritual stop wasting your money and wasting your time go and flog it with god first then you can come out is someone learning yeah. there are people here I, I don't mean to insult you but you have been in lagos for decades lagos by any standard even a global standard is a place of plenty where god helps men but there are people whose territory swallows the inhabitants it is strangers that will come and in five months god has helped them and yet there are people who will tell you we are the people whose creativity designed lagos we are the ones who are intelligent and no door opens i'm praying for you again i don't know what embargo has sat on your head but in the name of jesus by the god who has shown us mercy 
and by the power that raised Christ from the dead for you and for anybody you are standing in for I declare you are delivered now you are delivered now hallelujah do you know there are spirits that stop you from identifying those that will be rising so that you are not part of their lives do you know with all due respect and with every sense of humility and responsibility there are people who are in my life today they were in my life before and because of that sacrifice i've made a covenant with myself and my destiny that for as long as i'm alive they will not beg for bread do you know that the god can connect you to strategic people but there are spirits that can make you drive the most important people in your life just before god leaves them and they will forget imagine if judas was just, just patient what is 30 shekels he, if he was patient for just one more week one more week he would have become an apostle one more week he would have become an apostle but for 30 shekels that he did not use there are some of you right now the next ceo the next apostle the next prophet is close to you but there are spirits that will drive you from a relationship with them and when they rise have you heard people who say i know this the minister of this was my friend this one but something kept diverging good people away from your life and will only leave troublemakers in your life anyone in your life right now that is not of god anyone in your life programmed by darkness to cause you pain to recycle sorrow in your life this night in the name of jesus i separate them from you forever i separate them from you forever i separate them from you forever hallelujah I used to know a man years ago and a few years maybe about two years ago I had the opportunity to meet him and I did not know that a particular sensitive office in this nation he was the one occupying these are offices that you know maybe something like land that whatever happens they are the ones if they don't stamp it you can suffer no matter how rich you are and I got to find out that these are the people that God placed there and he saw me and we're laughing exchanging pleasantries and he just made a statement in passing he said as, as for you you just just find rest i said you see the kind of good things that god can bring for people that someone can look at you and say are you not the mother that taught me in primary five for as long as i am alive you will never beg for bread there are people like that but there are other people especially in old age you will see that they are alone and there is nobody yet they spend their life raising people just at the point where the miracle happens, Satan creates something and throws you away. I'm saying that because I'm about to call back your destiny helpers. If there is anyone in your life, please hear me, that has been ordained by God to help you rise or to stay with you, whether in government, whether spiritually, in the name of jesus whatever has taken them out of your life by the mercy of the god of david may they be restored now may they be restored now may they be restored now do you believe this hallelujah the lord is asking me to pray i'm going to be praying for the sick now the lord is asking me to pray for someone i don't know if it's you or someone related to you who is having kidney kidney problem this is i'm talking of a verified a kidney issue just lift your hand where you are i don't know who that person is i want to pray for you because with what i'm seeing if a miracle does not happen this this with what i'm seeing you know is it's almost as if they are just going the way of the grave but there is power in the name of jesus hallelujah now that we're about to pray please don't tolerate any sickness even if it's headache let it go are we together now 
remember the scripture i taught you in the morning acts chapter 12 that herod made up his mind to vex certain jews and they caught james and beheaded him and the church kept quiet the bible says when he saw that someone's death pleased the jews he proceeded further to catch peter but the church said will not keep quiet again the bible says and prayers was made by the church unto god for him an angelic assistance came please lay your hands now i want to pray for you we have a few minutes left but i must pray for you whilst you are laying your hands there be declaring that it is over i don't care what it is high blood pressure cancer diabetes you have a death sentence they said there is something that is eating your womb or growing up in your stomach your your organs prostrate cancer in one minute speak to it there is authority in the name of jesus they said you are deaf in one ear or both ears you may never be able to hear never be able to see never be able to walk they say your child is autistic you are a sickler your organs are malfunctioning go ahead and pray I sing praises to your name. Keep praying. Oh God, praises to your name. Oh God, for your name is... My God, the power of God is moving in this place. I sing praises to your name Oh God Praises to your name Oh God For your name is great And great to be Where's Judy Kay? Come and sing a song for me. And I see Alleluia. And I see Alleluia. Jehovah. Where you are, oh, where you are. We want to And I see Alleluia. And I see Alleluia. Find a key for her and let her sing that song. I want to pray for the sick now. Please, I want you to believe the power of God is in this place right now. I want to pray. That devil of darkness is about to leave you right now. And while you are standing, you can stand in for your children also. Worship him in one minute.
to pray for you the lord is healing a woman i'm seeing it in my vision you have had literally the issue of blood you have been bleeding for a long time this thing has caused a serious problem in your body the power of god is touching you right now the power of god is touching you right now now hear me anyone here with any blood related disease whether cancer or hiv anything related to the blood hepatitis in the name of jesus i stand upon the grace of the angel in this house and i decree and declare every planting that is not by god we flush it out of your body now we flush it out of your body now the lord is showing me a gentleman you have something that looks like a boil not directly in your armpit but just somewhere here it's like a swelling i don't know what it is but i need to pray for you in the name that is above all names wherever you are by the power that raised christ from the dead be healed now anyone with any growth in your abdominal region i don't care what it is called fibroid whatever help them. my god please help them the power of god is coming on them now please help them in the name of jesus help this woman please right now god is removing it removing it now removing it now removing it now you believe me my god is removing it now let that devil leave your body now in the name of jesus christ there's someone your relative this is something that has to do with the brain is it a brain tumor or something the lord is i'm hearing the name brain like brain tumor i don't know who that person is whether you are stand following online or standing in faith that person will not die i say it again that person will not die we close the gate of the grave and we declare they must leave in the name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the name of the lord now i'm seeing there's someone you have a problem with is it your kneecap this is what i'm saying in the name of jesus your kneecap lay your hands there i decree and declare using her as a point of contact to anyone doesn't matter where you are i'm seeing a woman in fact you have been seeing yourself on a wheelchair this is like a dream you had and you saw yourself sitting on a wheelchair from that time half of you you've started having pain like arthritis in jesus name every planting that is not by my god manifesting as pain in any part of your body especially your kneecap be healed now be healed now be healed now my dear i see you what happened to you you fell from a staircase how long two years huh don't cry darling you are the mother mommy you fell two years ago and you could not walk what where which of the legs my uncle had ligament injury it's tough and they did a surgery for it but the pain is still there and my doctor said i'm his longest patient that you will not be fine he said i'll be fine but i'm his longest patient that he doesn't know why he's not healing the healing is slow can i pray for you yes, place your hand on your stomach father i stretch my hands right now right now by the power that raised christ i release the anointing to this body in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus let there be life to you my dear look at me lift it do what i ask you to do just lift it gently hallelujah in the name of jesus christ i declare supernatural perfection for you by the power of the holy spirit and if there is anybody here who is having any bone condition that is impeding your movement i decree and declare let the power of god rest upon you right now 
in the name of Jesus Christ is there anyone here with the name Abiodun Abiodun is there someone with that name I'm hearing the name Abiodun and the Lord is telling me that he's visiting your family who is that person you just stand where you are because what your, your name is Abiodun you are sure this gentleman father every time you speak is because you want to end struggles in the name of Jesus Christ by the power that raised Christ from the dead I use this family as God has revealed as a point of contact any family here that has gone through long-standing issues it comes to an end now <laughs> hallelujah I'm still praying for the sick the Lord is showing me someone you are always seeing dead people these are your relatives that have gone but you are always seeing them this is not the spirits of just men made perfect this is a demonic thing I want to pray for you anything trying to call you to the grave by the power that raised Christ and right here at this word and prayer conference we close the gate of the grave we close the gate of the grave we close the gate of the grave you shall not die in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah now hear me if you are here either for you yourself or for your daughter or your relative you've not been able to take in either as a couple or you know I want you to place your hand on your stomach prophetically I want to pray for you you will marvel and wonder at what this God can do place your hand there can stand in for your wife you can stand in for your sister you can stand in for your brother by all means it doesn't matter how many years by the privilege of God's grace I can tell you I have seen people who have been barren for decades that God gave children God opened up barren wombs you have seen the testimonies I want to pray for someone now for some of you the kind of medical report they have given you it's only God that can help you but I don't care what the medical report is do you know listen true story many of you who follow the ministry you've seen I have seen people who have been pregnant for more than two years how does somebody carry pregnancy the machines show that you are not pregnant but all the signs are there with the bulging stomach a nine month what pregnancy and you carry it for two years and with one prophetic word you go and give birth even after two years let me decree and declare whatever it is we respect doctors we respect the medical report they have brought but in the name of Jesus Christ by the power that raised Christ from the dead every mother every father everyone here desiring the fruit of the womb I decree and declare according to Genesis chapter 21 from verse 1 and 2 according to the time of life by this time next year return with your miracle children by this time next year return with your miracle children in the name of Jesus Christ dementia forgetfulness this thing is happening to someone already you forget names you are forgetting relatives in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind I declare receive a sound mind receive a sound mind receive a sound mind in the name of Jesus now whether I mention your case or not in the name of Jesus the son of the living God there is someone the Lord just healed you of diabetes you have diabetes you will go and check yourself and you will see that that diabetes is gone forever in the name of Jesus Christ now in one minute while we bring the prayer request Lake on and anybody there please help us everybody open your mouth and begin to pray that these Egyptians we see today we will see them no more forever is someone praying if you are yet to submit your prayer request can you wave it so that the ushers please ushers help us 
let's attend to those outside please pray there are still people here who are yet to submit this Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to the world. Lift your hands and sing it. Something more than gold. I got something more than gold. If all I have is Jesus, I got something more than gold. Can we start to pray? Do we have the request here? Please stretch your hands towards this request. Father, my own is here. Visit me. Visit me. Please pray and watch the wonder working power of Jesus. We are praying now in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone is praying. Take away the shame. Take away the reproach, oh God. Take away the shame. You wrote this by yourself. Pray. There is a God that answers prayers. For your business, for your spouse, for your children, for your ministry. Oh, pray. New heritage. In the name of Jesus. We lay hands upon this. In the name of Jesus. Father, visit families. Visit destinies. Visit families. Visit businesses. Visit spiritual lives, marriages, finances. Visit academics. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Do you know why I love to pray on requests like this? And, and graciously we thank the reverend for allowing this to happen. This is the most accurate representation of your desires. No matter how much we prophesy, we only see in part. But being that you wrote this yourself, please give us Mark eleven twenty four. The Bible says, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 it says be anxious philippians 4 8 be anxious oh, verse 6 my apologies 6 be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving it says let your request be made known don't assume god knows let your request be made known i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ on behalf of everybody here and god of heaven we pray that in the name of jesus concerning this prayer request may they be turned to testimonies now may they be turned to testimonies now let there be all kinds of miracles in this place marital miracles financial miracles miracles in your spiritual life
career miracles establishment miracles healing miracles deliverances breakthroughs restoration in the name of Jesus Christ for some of you what you have written here God will need to take some people out of the way for it to be answered by all means may they get out of the way there are people what you have written here God will need to bring people into your life in the name of Jesus may they come in there are some of you here what you have written down will need wisdom may the wisdom to actualize this rest upon you hear me every long-standing issue that has been here for a long time the same way you dropped it in this basket that is how that challenge drops off your life in the name of jesus christ therefore i declare that these egyptians you see today may you see them no more forever may you see them no more forever may you see them no more forever now i want to speak over your life and i want you to please i want you to please listen this is the final stage of this impartation and then you will i want to declare favor upon you and i want you to believe it the grace for favor is real and it can be transferred in the name of jesus even at these times that we live in there are many of you who need this grace for favor as a bailout system in the name of jesus may my god who is also your god release that grace upon you hallelujah now if you came with any point of contact any document whatever it is just lift it prophetically i want to speak over it once and for all don't worry if you don't have anything you can just stand in faith anything at all you must come and testify on this altar i decree and declare the works of your hands whether it's your cv your certificate i don't know what has come upon it that is bringing negative reports negative results but in the name of jesus let an anointing come upon it now let an anointing come upon it now for some of you these documents you are lifting go and bring results with them the photos of your family members who are lifting may god visit that family in the name of jesus whatever it is you desire as touching these points of contact that is consistent with the will of god may god make it happen for you in the name of jesus may god make it happen for you and for those of you who have applied for jobs applied for projects and yet you've not been attended to in the name of jesus let the book of remembrance for your sake be opened this night let it be opened this night in the name of jesus hallelujah finally there are people here whose spiritual lives have gone down you need to receive this impartation there are people who you want to pray but the grace is not there five minutes ten minutes and you are tired you are weary the grace to travel until you contact power is not there there are those who want to study the word but there are all kinds of distractions i hope you know for everything you have shouted amen to if it's minus your spiritual health you did not receive much i hope you know that hallelujah in order of priority the richest impartation to, tonight is that which makes for a robust and an effective spiritual life there are some of you the grace to fast is not there if you are not fasting you can stay a whole day without eating but the moment you say i want to fast by nine you are sweating already 
no that is an attack you can't be strong that way are we together yeah the discipline to grow spiritually to study materials to submit yourself to learning in the name of jesus the fire upon your altar that has gone down let it be reignited now prayer fire be reignited now what study fire be reignited now hear me blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful but his delight is in the law of the lord the bible says and on that lord doth he meditate day and night that he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water which yield its fruit in season and whose leaves does not wither hallelujah i pray for you any wrong association misleading you pushing you away from the things of god after this conference be restored to the right relationships <laughs> hallelujah if the the call of god is upon your life you know you are being trained by god there is a call a ministerial call upon your life and yet you do not know how to even navigate your way i want to pray for you the unction and the mantle there is a generation that must serve god generationally i'm not talking about a few people out of a crowd of many in the name of jesus everyone who came here trusting god for an upgrade in grace that there are certain anointings and graces you so desire I stand as one who has been helped by God and I declare unto you the graces you so desire receive them now 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 in the name of Jesus Christ My apologies for stretching you in one minute whether you belong to this church family or not I want you to open your mouth and begin to pray for New Heritage Baptist Church pray like you are praying for your own church pray like you are praying for your father your mother your children go ahead pray oh the grace here will not die someone is praying pray for the youth the eldership the pastorate pray for the angel over this house his children the wife the family lord keep them untimely death is far from this church members will not be buried anyhow in the name of jesus increase on all sides pray for the youth robust and vibrant serving the lord pray for missions in the name of jesus christ soul saved pray for every family that makes up the new heritage baptist church let grace rest upon them favor upon them fire upon them For in Jesus, much less name we have prayed. In Jesus, much less name we have prayed. Before I make the final declaration over your life, one last time as we wrap up this conference, I want to give somebody an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. This is the ultimate reason why we are gathered. Please be seated for a minute. You will always find in every congregation let me have your attention please men and women who are saying apostle if you will give me an opportunity to make it right with Jesus I am determined to make it right with Jesus perhaps you were here and you were not convicted enough to make that decision sincerely or 
you were invited today and now on hearing me speak by the spirit the lord jesus is convicting you whether you are making this as a first decision or you are rededicating your life to jesus there are so many people outside i want to make a request those who are within this auditorium i'm going to count one to five very boldly without any sense of shame or fear i want you to stand and i'm going to ask you to come and stand in front even though the space is limited when it is full you stand remaining wherever you are and for those who are outside all the overflows i will request that you move forward to the front of whatever section you are in now and then those online right there in your home watching by television i want you to indicate you lift your hand and you pray the prayer that follows shortly after now so wherever you are i need jesus i want to make it right i want my life to count i begin my counting one to five please stand up boldly without any sense of shame and fear come to the front god bless you come to the front new heritage let's celebrate them come two don't sit back when the holy spirit is telling you to stand and come hallelujah three those outside make sure they are coming young and old male and female come to jesus four one last count and we're done hallelujah hallelujah now praise god for all of you those up those here and those in all of the overflows i want to salute you for making jesus lord of your life somebody help the little children so that they understand what they are doing praise the name of the lord do we have somebody to help them praise the name of the lord now please let me have your attention just for a minute and then you can feel it a little later thank you for making this noble decision the bible says as many who um he will know who will come to him he will in no wise cast away i want to lead you to make this most noble decision the wisest decision any man can make in this side of god's kingdom please lift your right hand high above your head i see you all of you at the overflows and then those outside say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my lord my savior and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god washed by the blood of the lamb let me pray for you now heavenly father thank you for these precious people they have come declaring your lordship over their lives i pray in the name of jesus christ that you honor their confessions of faith and by the authority of scripture we call you bona fide recipients of the life of god from tonight the grace to live the victorious christian life is imparted upon you you go forward ever and backward never i call you the righteousness of god in christ jesus the power to live a victorious life is released upon you in jesus matchless name now you'll be given a card there is a card you're going to be given by the counselors please do well to feel some of our little children help them feel it or you can just carry them somewhere and let them understand what they've done and for those of you who are here and outside may the lord bless you please feel it legibly make sure you leave your contact in case they want to reach you hallelujah may the lord bless you when you are done please submit it to a counselor and then you are back to your seat praise the lord have you been blessed tonight hallelujah one last time i declare over your life that from the beginning of this conference up until now everything god has declared upon you remains permanent 
and that which you have received tonight remains permanent the testimonies that begin to follow in the name of Jesus will cause a praise from your life and will bring many to the saving knowledge of Jesus and as for this great church you will only go from glory to glory may the Lord bless you by this time next year everyone here will still be alive everyone here will still be strong every family here will still be intact the only difference is that you would have risen greater than you are now may the lord bless you in jesus name we pray thank you